Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Guess who's back? Pastor George, and he's got more revelation, and you are going to like this message. Tell them what it is, Pastor George. Gloria, we are going to spend the next 10 days talking about how, how to, believe to believe God for a house. a house. Isn't that exciting? How to believe it for a exciting. house? It is exciting. And and you've done, you and Terry have done that. Ken, I've We've done, done that. that. You've We've done been that. in our house for I don't know ten or twelve years, however long it's been. And it is also here's something else. When you get it, it's a blessing. Yes. And there's not any payments that's there. That's right. That's Glory right. To God. So we could really add in there how to believe God for a debt-free house, although you and I have been talking about debt freedom. Yeah. So we're learning how to do that. But I wanted to start this off. We're going to start with 1 John chapter 5 today. But <clears throat> let, me, let me introduce this study like this. Everything that we're talking about here, all of the notes that I prepared, which by the way are available to you right now on kcm.org, Go over there, click onto the picture of Glory and me, and you can frame you can it. frame the picture up. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <clears throat> you can print that out one out too. But you can print those out. Follow along the broadcast with us. Go back over and over again. And also I want to let you know that. Uh, there's a special internet broadcast that Terry and I have taped about our own testimony yeah. of how we believe God, that we are now living in a debt-free home. And we'd like for the, <clears throat> for the, the audience to give us their testimonies. We if want their done, testimonies. When they do that, and, and I'm sure some of them already have. Well, That'd just, be great. We might do a book on I it. I just happen to have one here that oh, I'll read to you okay. from uh, a South African partner. And she said... Everywhere. What's that? It works everywhere. It works. Yes, it does. Not just in the United States. It works all over the world. Amen. I have been watching the Believer's Voice of Victory this entire week, and this morning I had a major breakthrough in my life concerning money. I feel like I've been deluded and have handled debt and financial issues over to God. The burden was totally lifted off of my shoulders, and a marvelous sense of relief Praise and rest God. in God Out took over my life. Yeah. It was as though my eyes were open to the Praise truth. Praise God, George, and that doesn't that thrill you? So that's what's happening. Now this topic, Gloria, this you are the inspiration. You are my inspiration for this message. Praise God, I'm looking because forward to hearing it. Let, let me tell you folks how this works in this family. <laughs> I've been with this family for 37 you, years. You should get a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 37 I've years. I've never seen you mad or upset or throwing things. I, I Congratulations, have not, Thank you George. so much, Gloria. And when I came into this family, I came in hungry for the Word. I was serious about this. Had been a student at ORU, met Terry, came home, and I was supposed to go to back, go back to ORU, and y'all hired me. Uh, listen to me, y'all. Y'all. Uh, See, you're getting it. You're I'm getting it. it. So yeah. you hired me here. I started the art department, and I, that was back in 1976. Well, the side benefit, which really wasn't a side benefit, it was the major benefit, and that was to hear you and Kenneth teach the Word. Praise God. Preach the Word. I listened, Gloria, to those tapes back then. Um, <clears throat> I studied the Word. I followed the Word. And one of the things that you taught us, not just Terry and me, but also uh, uh, Kelly and Steve, John and Marty, we all have followed the pattern that you've set for us in Praise believing God. God for a house. And each one of us now are in beautiful homes. And that's where all of these teachings came from. They Praise came from God. you. They came from Kenneth. So if I were to dedicate this series, I'd dedicate it to Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, well, especially to I'm you. And, and the research that came from this came from the messages that you preached and especially God's Will is Prosperity, Chapter 2 because chapter two is where you talk about this and we're going to be using that uh, as we go along in this study. But in everything that you've taught me about standing in faith and believing God, there's one thing that I've learned from you all that you have to start with and that is this, faith begins where the will That's of God right. is known. That's exactly right, yeah. Faith begins where God's will is known. And you know, I want to talk on this broadcast. We want to talk to you today about God's will for you. It is the will of God for you to have a beautiful, debt-free home. And with that kind of confidence, because knowing the will of God, Glory, it brings a confidence yes. that rises up on the inside. 
And so I want to begin today. Let's take a look at 1 John 5, 14 and 15. I'll read it to you from the King James. I'm going to have Gloria read it from the Amplified. It just so expounds this. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. Amen. Sister Verse Gloria, 14. would you read that? And this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege. I like that. The privilege. I never had noticed it specifically before. The privilege, privilege of boldness, of boldness wow. that we have in Him. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to His will in agreement with His own plan, He listens to and hears us. Hmm. And if since we positively know that He listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have yeah. granted us as our present possessions the request made of Him. That's a mouthful. Oh, that's a good scripture. What a, isn't what it? a powerful, Marvelous. what a powerful scripture it's that is. Too. This is the confidence. This and is a, the. And the Bible says, "Believe you receive when you pray." Believe you receive when you, you pray. If you don't take it when you pray, you yeah. don't have. You haven't received it. That's, that's right. That's easy. That's right. That's, that's exactly, exactly right. Because that's what that word means. Receive is to take it. And we, we took it you and took we it. got it. And you it. got it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And we enjoy it every day. Every there are day. so many people that don't realize that it is the will of God for them to live in a beautiful, debt-free right. home. You know one way you could get a clue about that? Hmm. Check out heaven. Check what out. do they say? They say we got some project houses up yeah, there. <laughs> no, right. there's no. mansions there. No, that's there, right, Gloria, mansions. And there's no debt there. That's right. And the streets, they make out of gold. That's right. So, hey, Thy will be done on earth. Amen. As, as it, it is, is in, heaven. in heaven. That's that's right. So, uh, the, these couple of phrases here that I wrote down in our notes, that I've learned, I've learned them from Kenneth, Kenneth Hagen, and F.F. F. Bosworth. You can keep going back, but faith, faith stops at the question mark. Yeah. Whenever there is a lack of confidence about something, such as a house, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people out there that don't know that God would provide that for them, mm -hmm. and, and really don't think that God will. Oh, He couldn't possibly do that for me. He wouldn't do that for me. That's too big of something to ask. But faith stops right there. But where the will of God is known, that's when faith where begins. Where the will of God is known. Yeah, that's right. Faith begins. Who is it Bosworth says that? Faith begins. Where the will of God is where, known. Yeah. You know, I Amen. first heard Kenneth say that. And I thought, man, that's a good statement. I wrote it down. Then I heard Kenneth Hagin say that. And I thought, Kenneth Hagin got that from Kenneth Copeland. <laughs> <laughs> well, seemed like we both got it from Bosworth. And then I, wa I read F.F. F. Bos Bosworth's book on Christ the Healer, and yeah. I looked, looky there, there it is. We don't know where he got it. <laughs> he got he it somewhere. He might have gotten it direct. Yeah, he might have gotten it direct. Well, faith begins. That's right. Faith begins for your house where the will of God is known for your house. Mm -hmm. That's where it mm -hmm. starts. That's the beginning place. And we know that God's Word is God's perfect will. Next week... Uh, and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, Gloria, you and I are going to look at 21 house scriptures. 21. 21 That'd be fun. house scriptures. The will of God is known wow. in the Word of God. I'm just thinking, do I need another house somewhere? Let me think. Uh, <laughs> well, I know there are folks. There are folks that need homes. That's they right. They need, and it's such a blessing. It oh, is my, a blessing. My. It is a For blessing. All the and Gloria, it's no matter what the critics might say about this topic that we're talking about, mm -hmm. you ask any wife, mother, That's right. and you ask her, how important is your home to you? You ask any man, how important That's is your true. home to you? Gloria, Terry and I have a beautiful home. I was in my study this morning, and it's, Terry built that for me. She knew what I desired. She knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And she, she added that portion. We added a portion onto the house, and that was part of it. And she knew the design. She knew what I wanted it to it's look like. Gorgeous study. I've got windows that overlook the water. It's a really kind of like a New England 
thick, dark wood. We with, keep thinking you'll get over that. Well, you know, there's just some things that you, you I just you're, enjoy you're that. You're picking up Southern tradition pretty well. Oh, well, yeah, well, just ask me what I eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was sitting there this morning, Gloria. I was walking back and forth, praying in the spirit over these broadcasts. And I said, thank you, Lord. Isn't that true? What a beautiful place to come home so. to. What a restful place, Lord, that you've given to Terry and me. You know, our yeah. kids are married now. They're out of the house. And we do have them come back every now and then. And, you know, Aubrey has her room. And there's, there's places for the babies. We can put them when they come over. But we're at the point right now where we, they call us empty nesters. And Terry and I will come home from a day of work here. And on a, sometimes on a Thursday night or a Friday night, you know, you've gone through a week you drive home and she'll look at me and say, it's your turn to find dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll figure it out. So I'll go out and get something, bring it back. And we sit on the couch and we'll watch TV together. And I'll sit there and think, what a peaceful home. It's a What blessing. a beautiful home. And it ministers back yes, to it us. Does, all the time. So we've got to know that it is the will of God. So we're going to investigate this. Let's turn to Genesis Chapter well, I don't two. know anyone that wouldn't be interested in uh, a place that God gives you that's mm -hmm. just made for you, mm -hmm. that's a blessing that you enjoy. I mean, the Bible talks about days of heaven on the earth. That's right. And I believe that's that. That's right, Gloria. Amen. And I walked through the house the other day, and you know I do this often. I walk through, I'll pray, um, especially on Saturdays getting ready for church or maybe... Mm -hmm. If I have a slot of time that I'm home, I'll just walk through the house and pray in the spirit. And I was praying the other day and I was walking through and just looking around and Terry, she put in beautiful crown molding and all of that, just the thickness of the, the beauty of the mm -hmm. house. Just walking through, thanking, Father, thank you. Thank you for this debt free Glory home. to God. Hallelujah. And if he did it for us, if he did it for yeah. you, he can do that for you right. if you'll exercise your faith. And you believe God. And let's look at, we're talking about the will of God. If you're talking about the will of God, you've got to start at first beginnings, the beginning of it all. And I'm looking here at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. In the King James Version, it says this, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, mm. and there he put a man whom he had formed. In the Amplified Bible, he planted a garden towards the east in Eden, and then in parentheses it says delight. Yeah, Eden delight. was a place of delight. And there he put the man whom he had formed and framed. Now, Gloria, I looked up the word Eden. I just had a real sense that there's something wrapped up in that word. We've been listening to, to Kenneth preach about the blessing. Yeah. And that everywhere we go, we're establishing the Garden of Eden that our, our homes and our lives are to be a veritable garden of Eden, a garden of Eden. And we're supposed to take that garden. It's, a, it's supposed to spread everywhere. And I thought, you know, I've never looked up the word Eden. What does that mean? Eden. Eden. And what did you find? In the Hebrew, first of all, the word Eden says, the region of Adam's home. The region. It's the region of Adam's home. And then it says this, Gloria, the house of pleasure. Oh, I like that. Eden is not only the region of Adam's home, but it was the house of pleasure. Praise God. And in the Hebrew we find in, in those two defini definitions, the region of his home and the house of pleasure. So we see right there, it's house the will of, of God. Yes, it's amen. the will amen. of God for us. The Garden of Eden There's was nothing God's. Nothing missing in the garden. Nothing was missing in the garden. You didn't have to cook. You didn't have to do anything. That's just right. Eat off the tree. That's right. Ah. I know how much, Gloria. I know how much how important a house has been to you. When I showed up, you know, this is 1976, and I can remember the house that you were you were living in at the time. And I remember walking through the house. There was, it's the one that overlooked downtown. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I just remember, I just remember walking through. Beautiful home. And I remember looking at your bookshelf. And you, interesting, I'd never really seen this before, but it, there were stacks of architectural digests. 
<laughs> well, of course. And they had these little stickies coming out <laughs> yeah. of them. And just I still have some. <laughs> I still have magazines. And then you moved to the next house. That next house was on the lake. Um, yeah. And I remember there was a room. It used to be John's room. And then when John moved out, it was a big, it was a guest like an extra guest bedroom, but you could walk into it from the driveway. Yeah. And I can remember walking in and there were, the, again, these tall bookshelves, <laughs> except this time there was a multitude of architect, architectural digest, house and garden. Oh yeah. And they all had these sticky, and you know something, that really, that really marked my thinking. What are you doing? Well, you're, you're, uh, Tell us. Furnishing your dream. Tell us. You know, what if you believe for something and you never, what if you believe for a new car? Yeah. And you never you went have a vision down to for the it. dealership to see what you wanted to do. And you don't know what kind of car, just a new car. Well, that won't work very fast. Yeah, that's right. And uh, That's right. And so you get a picture of these things. You get a picture. And then, of course, mm. there came a day when I worked with an architect and got right. whatever I wanted right. in a house. Right. But all of that was part of the image. That's what it is. You had to build the it's image. It's the image, uh, like, uh, like when you're believing for healing. You yeah. need to see an, have see an image. Healed. If you're in a wheelchair, you need to have an image of yourself playing ball, running around, right. playing right. tennis, a picture. walking, going up and down the stairs. Yes. That, that's part of our believing. And you were... It's in our spirit. That's the, I, the reason that caught my eye, and Terry too, is we began to do that. We began to look through those magazines and get an image of what God had for us and paint that image yeah. on the inside of it, meditate on it. That's what, that's what refrigerators were built for. That's right. To put your uh, right. prayers of agreements and pictures of houses and whatever it is that it's you're believing prayer. God for. That's right. So a house, Gloria, and so I, I really was, was taken by that, what you had done, and I saw what you were doing, building that image because of the blessing our surroundings should be like the Garden of Eden. We should come home at night. And I, I must say how much I enjoy coming into our house. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Our homes should be a refuge right. and places like that minister like the Garden of Eden. And we have a short amount of time, but let me, let me just read this one scripture and we're going to read plenty. Okay, good. We've got a lot of scripture. Oh, it's going to be fun, George. We've got a I'm lot of scripture. It. It's a scripture, Isaiah 32, 18. This is just one of many scriptures that prove that it's God's will for you to have a house, a nice house, a pleasant house. And it says, Isaiah 32, 18. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Oh yes, amen. Isn't that good? That says a lot. It really does. And you look up habitation in the Hebrew and it means home, residence, home. a dwelling, hmm. a pleasant place. That's right. You know that really, uh, your surroundings. I mean, God wanted them to be in the Garden of Eden. That's correct. So it lets you know that your environment and your surroundings are important. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because it's peaceful. You know, I get up in the morning, I have my cup of tea, I go out mm -hmm. to the porch and mm -hmm. I sit in front of the lake and I pray and I read Gorgeous. my Bible. It's peaceful. It's peaceful. Oh. And it ministers peace. That's right. It ministers peace And we're to in us. the country. I don't want to <clears> live in, <throat> don't y'all listen there living in the city, but I don't want to live in the city. I yeah. want to live out where the birds are and the trees yeah. and flowers. And that's your, that's, that's my preference. <laughs> that's your part so of heaven. A lot heaven. of people like the city. They sure. like the hustle sure. and the bustle. But, but, but I'm for a you, country girl. <laughs> you're a country girl. <laughs> hey, let me listen. Let me read just a couple of these translations. They're in your notes there. Okay. In the NIV translation, my people, my people, it says, will live in peaceful dwelling places. Yes, peaceful. In secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. Boy, that's, that secure homes, especially in our day, is mm -hmm. a special blessing. The message translation, my people will live in a peaceful neighborhood, in safe Ooh, isn't that houses, good. in quiet gardens. Yes. I like that I'm so trying much. To I am fulfilling that scripture. The Darby translation, my people shall sit in the beauty of peace, in, in tabernacles of confidence, and in wealthy rest. Glory rest. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Hallelujah. And finally, the New Living Translation, my people will live safely, quietly at home. Yes, amen. They 
will be at rest. Glory to God. It is the will of God. That is awesome. For you and your family <sighs> to live in a beautiful home. And if you stay with us, Gloria, if they stay with us over these 10 days, and they get into this, this will be a, this will be a how to yeah. believe God for your house seminar. Yeah. And we'll begin to see that image yeah. grow. And the sub thing the is how you believe God for a house is how you believe God for your healing, your car or whatever you need. That's right. Your children. That's right. Your salvation. We can do it, church. We yes, can we believe can God. It. We just have to keep the word of God concerning the issue that we're standing for mm -hmm. in our eyes, in our ears, and in our mouth. We can't believe for something like if you're believing for healing, you can be talking sickness and disease. You Preach talk it. healing and health and healing scriptures. Yes. And it's awesome, George, to it know awesome. that there's no limits. We can receive anything good That's from right. the Lord. That's right. If we'll flow with Him and we'll stand in faith and we'll talk it. Praise God. Today, I like it. We're going to talk about 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 yeah, well, really. Yes. If you believe for one debt free house, you could believe for two or three or four. You really could. I mean, whatever. You could. Once you, once you get the hang of believing, you believe for a car and you get it supernaturally. Yep. You know how to get another yep. car if you need one. And isn't that something to believe God for your own home and then another home? And who says you have to live in it? That's right. Maybe that's a house for somebody else. That's true. So the, 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 there are no limitations on what we can do with our faith. You know, there's a certain, there, there's a certain degree of growth. I mean, if I were to really go into the gym mm -hmm. and yeah. <laughs> work this out is, with somebody. Yeah, and, if you were, yeah. <laughs> I could get, I could just you get could so big. Up. But, but there's a limitation. I couldn't get as big as this room. You might not get any taller, but you could get For, bigger. bigger. <laughs> but that's the physical. We're talking about yeah, the spiritual. Right. There is no limit no. to how how much growth we can experience. You think there's going to be any dead on my mansion? <laughs> no. 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 Wow. You're going to want to come see me too. That's I will come visit All you, right, Gloria. Great. We'll come on over. I, I'm, it's going to be gorgeous. <clears throat> but there's something, Gloria, that we need to look at that you In and heaven, Kenneth. I'm talking about my heavenly mansion. Your heavenly mansion, yes. There's something that you and Kenneth did that I feel like is so important for us to talk about. And that was when you first discovered Romans chapter 13, verse 8. And let's take a look at that right now. Romans 13, verse 8. Yep. And I'm going to read it to you. That from was the, a game changer. That was, <laughs> I like that. That was Kenneth and Gloria's game changer. Uh -huh. and, and it's so important to go over this, Gloria, because this has been such an inspiration for Terry and me, for our family, for the body of Christ. Because little did you know that in that house in Tulsa, when you discovered this scripture, just how I far... I kind of felt like I was doomed, really. <laughs> the time we're I, doomed. <laughs> yeah, you, I didn't have much you, revelation on the subject. You didn't know how you were going to get a house, and Kenneth didn't know how he was going to get an airplane, right. debt-free. But there it was in the Bible, it was keep there. out of debt. It was there. And that's what it says here, Romans 13, 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Yep. And you made a decision in 1967 based on the meetings that you went to, Brother Hagen's, those quarterly meetings. Oh, we were learning how to use our faith. You were learning time. tremendously, getting started in this. And he, he said something that whatever you see in the Word, yeah. you take it. Put the Word first. You place. go with it. You, you walk in it. So you and Kenneth already made that decision. Whatever we see in the Word, yes, that's, right. we that's were, what we're going to we do. We were cornered. <laughs> <laughs> you found that scripture. And then you looked it up in the Amplified. I thought, well, I'll check it out in the Amplified. And it says, keep out of debt. Keep out of if debt. If I remember right. That's what it says, keep out of debt. And owe no man anything except to love one another. And you made another decision too, which, and I, I was, And you know, we didn't know how to do it then. We were just learning that's what it, we should do. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. But how do you do that yeah. in a big ticket item like that? And we that, were believing for gas and for our old car to keep running. You know, we were in that stage of life. You were, where's that? For our refrigerator. Yes, I was just going to say, you had a cardboard box. You had a cardboard on box. Yeah. So, uh, so that was uh, not really good news at the time. But you know, the Bible is good news, and it if it's good not news. good news to you when you discover it, 
you're just not seeing all there is to it. That's right. Well, <laughs> you know, you made that decision. It was a quality decision yeah. that you and Kenneth made. We're not going to borrow. That's right. And what that must have been like for the two of you looking at what you had around you, yeah. thinking to yourself, how? But you made that the Lord quality taught decision. Us what to do, yeah. And <clears throat> the. That's the, called putting the word first place put, in your life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most first place yes, in amen. your life. Whether and, you like it or not. And that's what you and Kenneth did. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you made that quality decision. And I like what you said when we were teaching on debt freedom. You talked about you're only one decision away yeah. from debt freedom. That's right. You can say the same thing about your house. That's right. You're only one decision away from your new house. From a debt-free house. From a debt-free house. So I'm reading here, you, you committed to live debt-free, and this is from God's Will is Prosperity. It's the book that you wrote. We have it available. You said, the first thing I began to believe God for was a house. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a chunk to I, I, I bite bit off. off. a big hunk there. But that was important to you. Well, that was my, yeah, that was my main desire in natural things. And you said, but what about Romans 13, 8? Which is not uncommon for a woman, you know. Well, that's what we were talking about yesterday, how important a house is to a woman, to a that's wife. Right. It, right. it was the same thing with Terry. You know, I was, when we were working on our house, we renovated our house for five years. And we bought it, paid cash for it, but then it needed renovation. And I was kind of thinking in the back of my mind, this is okay, this will work. But then there's mama and she had a vision mm -hmm. for this house and I just hooked it into Women gear. Are gifted in that they area. really are. <laughs> they really are. And she, uh, yeah. <clears throat> she had the vision for it. She could see it. And uh, we used a, a friend of ours who, who you know, who is a architect and designer and you've worked with him some. Well, we worked with him and I can just see them in, in that house, which by that time, they started tearing down walls, mm -hmm. and they're designing this and doing that. And I just sat there, and I'm using my faith. I'm yes, believing you God are. for this. Day and night. <laughs> and Terry and I both knew that we had made the commitment that we're not borrowing the money yeah. to get this thing done. So we basically did the same thing that you and Kenneth did, and made that commitment. And <clears throat> so, going back to the the woman question. Um, it was important to her. And I got, I just got on board with it. And I got so on board, I'll tell you what I did. That's very wise. Church. I was, <laughs> tell it, Gloria. I was so on board with it that we had, long story short, we had a particular part of the house we were building onto it. And <clears throat> it was the, it was the, the master bathroom area. Well, in that design, we were going to share a closet. And it was a big closet. But I just had a real unction. We were to have our own closets. It's about time. Yes, I agree. That's and wisdom. So I'm laying in bed. It's the middle of the night. And I'm thinking about this. And we already had poured the concrete and put the pipes down in there for the, this, the way it was going to be structured. And I'm laying in bed thinking about it. And I'm drawing this out in my, my mind. I had to get up. Middle of the night, draw it out, went to the kitchen. I drew this out because we were actually living in a rent house at the time. Drew it out, brought it back to Terry. I woke her up oh, good. two o'clock in the morning. I said, Terry, I can't go to sleep. I said, look at this. This is the way we need to do that. She said, you know, you're going to have to tear up that concrete. I know, but this is the way we're supposed to do it. And I thought, well, look at me. Yes. I hadn't thought about things like that, but that's, that's God. And that wisdom. is, that's the wisdom of God. And, and we did it. And you said in your book, you said, this is one area that most people think impossible to, to, to pay, build, yeah. to, to have your own home uh -huh. debt free. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you said, many have made this statement. Surely you don't have to believe for a home without borrowing the money. Surely you don't. Surely. Well, sure. You you don't you have to. Yeah, really. <laughs> and then in your sure book, is good, though. in your book, you took us, Gloria, to a scripture that I want us to look at right now in its 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And Gloria, in your book, you said this, where, where the house was concerned. Mm -hmm. This is what Gloria said. I hung my faith on that scripture. 
Oh, That's in what you said in, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians yeah. 9, 8. You said, I hung my faith on that scripture. And I was looking at that just yesterday. I was going through my notes and I thought, what a statement. I hung my faith on that scripture where your house was concerned. That's right. And you said, Satan would come to me with thoughts of doubt and say, there is no way that you can buy a house without going into debt. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, that's yeah. where you were, yeah. And when he said, you said, when he would do that, I would trust in and confidently confess 2 Corinthians 9, yeah. 8, mm -hmm. amplified, and it gave me the comfort and the it strength did. I needed to stand in God faith. God is able to make all grace. Yes, yes. And the amplified says, every favor and earthly blessing abound toward you, yep. not just trickle yep. in. That's right. Abound that's right. toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things <laughs> may abound to every good work. That's right. Now, what does it say? It That's says right. that. Yeah, it it's goes true. on. It goes on to say in that scripture. It was very um, encouraging. Let's see. So that you may always and under all circumstances, whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no, no aid, aid or support and furnished in abundance oh, for yeah, every good work and chair. That's the amplified. That's the big deal right there. <laughs> furnished. Yeah, furnished in abundance for every that. good work and charitable donation. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. So, and I looked at that scripture the other day. This is what you were standing on. This is what mm -hmm. you were believing God with, to be possessing enough to require no aid. Well, that means you don't have to no go to the bank. No outside help. No outside help that you are furnished in abundance. Furnished. Now, next week, That's Gloria, we're going to take, scripture. we are going to take a whole day and talk about how God will furnish your house. Oh, good. Scripture good. after scripture. And this is one of them. Glory to You'd God. You'd be furnished in abundance for every good work <clears throat> and charitable donation. And what Sister Gloria did was she hung her faith on that scripture. And you know what? Terry and I did the same thing. For Are our you house. sleeping on the floor? No. No, you no, got no, no. furnished. <clears throat> no. And we were believing God in the same way you were. And a you lot said, of people have done that. We need a, We ought to ask everybody that's done that, actually yeah. seen it through to the end, seen it through to, to the write the end. us their testimony. Yes. That'd be very interesting. Well, later this week, we have actually a testimony from someone who works here at KCM and who uh, goes to church here and they were just recently, within the last week, given a debt-free Praise house. God. Isn't that awesome? So later this week on Friday, we're going to show oh, that good. testimony. I want to hear that. So they stood on the scripture. Amen. They stood on the word of God. And Gloria hung her faith on that scripture. Terry and I hung our faith. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Tell us, Gloria, what does it mean to hang your faith? On that scripture, well, how that, would you? That's what you cling to it. <clears throat> okay, cling. Hang, cling, embrace. Got it. Got it. Think got it. on it. Say it. <laughs> Every time you a thought of doubt comes, you go to you say that scripture, yeah. and you you dismiss the doubt, out doubt, and you take whatever scripture you're standing on, and it, it gets embedded into your thinking, and it what it renews your mind. It renews your mind. The Bible talks about this word renewing your mind, and you begin to. You know, it's hard at first because you haven't renewed your mind, but right. the more you stand right. on it, then the more your mind, your spirit's going for it. Mm -hmm. Now we got to get your mind, your I've will, never, and your emotions in line I've with never, it. I've uh, never, <laughs> Gloria, I've never heard it quite put like that. Well, I never had thought your, about your that. Your spirit, but. your spirit, when you, when you we uh, are cling to the word, yeah. your spirit is going for it. Mm -hmm. And then your mind is being renewed. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And your emotions. And your body. We're training those now yeah. to do this, yeah. to fall in line. But the spirit's the most important part. You are a spirit. Yeah. So that's you. Yes. And your mind and your will yeah. and your emotions will, if you're believing for healing, a house, a husband, wife, mm -hmm. believe for the perfect one, by the way. But yeah. it'll get in line. Your, your uh, mind will get in line with it. And what does the Bible how does it describe that? Believe you receive it, mm -hmm. or that word mm -hmm. means take it. Take it when you pray, yeah. and it'll come to pass. So you were renewing your mind mm -hmm. with this scripture, this scripture from I the Amplified. I was planning, you I was drawing, I was 
looking at pictures. I was seeing what all I wanted to do. You were, you were clinging to it. I was. You were becoming immersed in it. It was becoming I embedded. I had received it. You received it, becoming embedded in your, in your spirit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's the scripture she used. And God is able to make all grace, all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may be may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid yeah. or support, furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. That's the way you believe for anything. Well, your that's, car, your children. Yeah your family, your health. That's what you said in the book. You said, believing God was the only way I could have my home. That's right. Believing God. That was it. Believing exactly God was the right. only way that you could have your home. And so let's turn to James chapter one and we'll finish with this scripture. What Gloria did, what Terry and I did, and what so many have done yes, a lot of in, in believing done God for their homes. And Gloria just said it. She hung her faith on that scripture. Mm -hmm. She clinged to it. She reached out to it. And she took it. other faith scriptures, of course, but... And that, but that that's, the one the Lord, that's the one the Lord yeah. led you to. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we have to do is we have to stay single-minded on the Word. That's right. All during that time, Gloria, that you and Kenneth were believing God for the house. And we'll get into the testimony of that because it's a good one. It took, took some time mm -hmm. for you for mm -hmm. that to finally happen. It took some time for us. But what we had to do, we had to stay so single-minded on the Word of God about our home. Talk it. Talk, talk it. right. Mm -hmm. Think right. Talk right. Mm -hmm. Do right. Mm -hmm. Resist right when doubt <laughs> yeah, tries to come. Resist right to you. when doubt You're tries to come. You're never going to get it. Yeah. So we use this scripture in James chapter one and verse. If in verse five it says, "If any of you lack wisdom." Mm-hmm. Well, let me back up a little bit here, Gloria. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse two, knowing this, the trying of your faith puts patience yes, to work. Yes, that's right. It but let patience. patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, entire. wanting nothing. Glory to God. If that's any right. of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, uh, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded yep. man is unstable That's in right. all of his ways. Boy, that is a key verse to get hold of in yep. any kind of thing you need to use your faith on. Yep. You got to keep that single-minded single on. Minded You're thinking, on the word. your words, single-minded on the Word of God. And I like these quotes. These are what you said in your book, Gloria. When I believe God for something, I don't waver. That's right. I like that. You can't waver. I like it. I have made a quality decision that the Word is true. This is you talking. I have built into myself a reliance on God's Word. I believe His Word more then I believe what I see or feel. Amen. And as I've heard Kenneth Hagin say, if you're determined to stand forever, it won't take long at all. Amen. You won't be there very long. You won't be there very say. long. So as we finish this, let me read this to you. This is a little short paragraph from God's Will is Prosperity. This is what you said. And we have to do this concerning a home or anything yeah. else. Healing. Healing. Children. <clears throat> the Word says, this is Gloria, the Word says He's able to get it to you. Don't look to the natural sources. Don't look to your job. You know, I think that's very important because people, when they start thinking about getting a home how debt can free, I do how can it come to me? How can we do it? They sit down with a pen and paper and say, okay, this is we how much we made. We don't have to figure made. out that part. Don't have to figure yeah. out that part. Don't look to your job. Who's your source? God is God. your source. When you're believing God, you have to look to His Word. Keep your eye single on the Word. I highlighted amen, that one amen, on my, my paper here. Keep your eye single on the Word of God. You have to realize and know that He can That's and right. will work on your behalf. God is a real operator. He is. He is able to get things done. He can make a way where there is no way. 
Glory he to can't, God. He did that with you and Kenneth on that first house. He did it with Terry and me. He's done it with Kelly yep. and Steve, doing That's it right. with uh, John and Marty. Lots I mean, of people in your church. In I'm our sure church are doing that. the same thing. But Gloria, the key to this is that we make that debt-free stand. We That's make right. that so quality you know, decision. You gotta dump your fear to make your debt-free stand or to make your stand for anything. <laughs> you dump your fear dump, is the name of this chapter. <laughs> dump, dump your fear. Your fear. And it's not easy to do that because you know like paying cash for a house when you don't have five thousand yep. dollars in the bank. Yep. Well uh it takes, you can't look at things. You can't look yep. at the natural. You have to dump right. your fear. To dump your fear. Dump your fear. I'll never, I'm never going to get a house <laughs> if I have to pay cash for it. To make that dump stand of that faith. fear. Yeah. Let's do that. We have about one minute left. Okay, do Can it. I pray for them right yes, now? Yes, do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everyone yes, who is watching. Yes, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I command you, dump, dump your, your fear. fear about never being able to have a home debt free. That's right. You dump that and you walk yes, by faith amen. and not by sight. You receive it by faith right now in Jesus' name. You take hold of that yes. debt free house. It's yours. It belongs Praise to you. God. And you lay hold of it and you hang your faith. You Praise cling Jesus. to the word yes. of God. God, that gives you that to. promise. And Father, I thank you thank for you, it Father. as we believe you for a perfect home yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. We agree with them, Thank Lord. you, Jesus. George and I agree Praise with Praise God. In Jesus' name. Praise Amen. God. Amen, Gloria. Glo Amen. We're going to hang on to that dump your fear. Yeah, I wrote we're it We're going to dump our fear dump over our sickness fear. and disease, Got it. over our children not turning out right. That's right. We're, this is dump, dump your fear, your fear week. week. <laughs> Lord really put it on my heart that we were to take these 10 days. I think that's great. And that we were to do a step-by-step -step uh, teaching for the people on how to believe God for a house. And the, the things that we teach on this broadcast, mm -hmm. we've incorporated it into yeah. our product that we're offering so that Good. you can take this, you can listen to it over and over again. You can go online right now to kcm.org and look for the picture of Glory Me. Click on to that picture and it'll take you right over to where the notes are and you can mm -hmm. print them out yourself. Uh, also, I want to remind you that Terry and I did a special BVOV internet broadcast where we give our testimony about how, how we were able to uh, receive from the Lord our debt-free home and what we went Good. through. And it'll give Terry's perspective on our, our side of the story. She's, she's, she's got a lot of details. She has all of that detail, things that I'm the, I'm the headline guy. Terry's the detail. So this should be, this should be very help. interesting be good. Yeah. for you to hear that. Well, Today, we, Gloria, we are talking about how to believe God for a house. And we started talking yesterday about the stand that you and Kenneth made, Romans 13, 8, you <clears throat> to stay out of debt mm -hmm. when you were in that home in, uh, in Tulsa. And the, the quality decision that the two of you made and the stand of faith that you took and the, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the focus that you had, that you were to be single-minded on that. So I'm reading a little bit from your book, God's Will is Prosperity. And, and you know, we didn't start out with a big house. Mm -hmm. We started right. out with a house and we believed God yep. for it. And, yep. But it was a nice house and we liked it. And we felt good about it. And it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, compared to what we had had, it was probably, I don't know, three or four times better than maybe more mm -hmm. than what we'd had. Mm -hmm. But you know, you have to start at where you are. That's right. I mean, it would have taken, might have taken the same amount of years <laughs> to believe for the, the house that we mm -hmm. live in now. Sure, sure. Uh, if we'd have started out trying to believe for that then, you know, but you gotta, you gotta work with where you are. But you always can move up. Well, we, when we made our decision to live debt free, the Lord led us. We had a house, we had borrowed on it. And the Lord led us to sell that house and, and through circum some situations and we were able to buy your sister's house, Missy's house, mm -hmm. which was really perfect for us. They had started a church in, for them in Amarillo too. and they were still paying on it. So we, we got involved with them on it, but then we wanted to renovate that house. So it took five years to renovate it. And it's it's a, quite a story. You'll probably we'll probably tell it on that. You know, I don't think I ever want to do that again. Oh, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, we we had we bought the house. We started the renovation of it, and we moved into an apartment 
after we moved out of our house that we sold, we sold that house, we moved into an apartment. We were there for a month. We had Jeremy and Aubrey still with us at that time. So we were there for a month. Then we moved to a house uh, in a little town near here for another month. We rented that house, mm -hmm. but that house it happened to turn out that it didn't have a septic system. This is it just, important, George. This, it just had a <laughs> tank. And so we We're evacuated. We're glad you didn't buy it. There, that smell was coming through the house, and we evacuated that house in the middle of the night, and we came to your house. Oh, great. We had no place to go. I don't remember you that. You and Kenneth were out on the road somewhere, oh, that's and we evacuated. You were you at a meeting. It. You occupied till we came back. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right. I do we, remember that now. Yeah. We moved in. By that time, Jeremy was actually out of the house. He moved into his own apartment. Aubrey was with us. We moved in that night. It was awful. That, not your house. It was awful, oh. the stink house that we were in. We call it the stink house now. That's funny. We lived with you and Kenneth for about six weeks until we fi found another rent property, so we moved into that. And that's, I mean, people go through things like that, but you're taking a stand of faith that's and you're right. determined this is the way we're going to do it. And we're going to live debt free. Amen. And that was just an attack of the enemy that year. Trying to stop you, talk you out of it, talk, talk you out of your stand, your man, faith. Man, oh man, he did. But we stood and we believed yeah. and we, we conquered. Amen. <laughs> stood, believed, and yeah. conquered. Amen. So we started yesterday talking about your story, reading from God's will is Prosperity Chapter 2. And in it, you said, we began believing God for the perfect home when we lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1968. Mm -hmm. That was about 500 square feet, I guess, maybe. That was a... Two, two uh, kids. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah, little bitty little. house <laughs> down by the river. It's a good thing they were little bitty kids at that time, That's wasn't right. it? Well, you said this, and I thought this was so fascinating. This is how God works. At the same time, there was a lady in Fort Worth, Texas, who started building her home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you began believing God at this time. At the very same time, there was a woman in Fort Worth. She was building her home. But the interesting thing about this, I mean, a lot of people were building a home at that time, but this was the home that you and Kenneth were going to be moving into. And I thought that was so fascinating. It really, it talks about the power of believing. And let's do this right now. Let's look at this scripture. Mark 11, 22, Jesus answering said to them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, now this is the scripture right here, what things soever you desire, mm -hmm. when you pray, believe, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Amen. That's what, that's what you do with faith. <clears throat> and Gloria? Whether it's healing, a car, a house, your children. Sure. Take it. Take that's it. That's what receive means in the that's Greek That's what receive take means. Take it. Take it. Now, this is how God works. Take it when you pray. If you don't take it when you pray, it's not working supernaturally. That's right. There you have that's it. So I take it. Yeah. You made a decision in Tulsa after you made that decision to live debt free, you began to believe God for a house. You said it. Well, the first decision we made was, we, we first were getting under Brother Hagin's ministry. We, we decided, we made a decision, whatever we see in the Word, we're going to do it. Okay, I had Good. no idea Good. the Word yes. said to stay out of debt. <laughs> that came first. Okay, yeah. thank you for saying that. So you did that first. Yeah. Then you found Romans 13, 8, mm -hmm. keep out of That's debt. That's right. So then I you wasn't made, exactly excited about that. You and Kenneth made the, you weren't excited mm -hmm. about it. You, I think you said. Because I didn't know. You know, we hadn't had much experience. We were just starting out here. I didn't know. I didn't have a revelation of all things being possible to you. Right. You know, at that time. Right. I was just, we were beginning to learn how to walk by faith. We were learning how to say things right <laughs> instead well, of wrong. Well, you were, you, know? you were immersing yourself at that time yeah. with Brother Hagin. He with yeah. his teachings, those mm -hmm. basic foundational That's things right. that, that were helping you. You know, we went to, I believe while we were there, Ken was at ORU one semester. Mm -hmm. We went during that time, and I was at home with the children who were small. During that time, Brother Hagen had three 10-day seminars while we were in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. He never did that again. That was it. 
not 10 days. I don't think he, yeah. I, if I have it right, yeah. he never had 10 day seminars where he taught twice a day in Tulsa. You know, the Lord was doing that for I'm you. I'm telling you. So he Ken was, was putting, learning at ORU under Brother Roberts and I was home with the children in yeah. my little project house. In that short itty bitty time frame. Which could have been very depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but I was getting the word. Yeah. Glory well, he supernaturally God. got you to a place yeah. where you needed to be learning the word. You, were, as I remember, you were learning new creation realities, the yeah. revelation yeah, of redemption. Yeah, we were I was listening to Brother Hagin's uh, listening reel to, him. to reel tapes. Reel to reel. A lot of people don't even remember oh, those. Oh boy! But I do. And Ken was see when he was at school, I was listening to Brother Hagin mm -hmm. tapes, and we were learning. He was listening to them too. But thank God. So the first thing you did, and this is what you said in your book, the first thing you did was, he was, he was going to believe God for an airplane, you were going to believe God for the house. That's right. Debt free. De house. Well, we'd already seen that scripture. <clears throat> Bite out that. Stay out of debt. Yeah. Keep out of debt. Yeah. So we, uh, by this time, we were committed. So you, and this is the point that I'm making here, you, <clears throat> you believe God, and at the same time, this woman is building a house in Fort Worth. That's right. And you released your faith. And it was that creative release of faith. It was that same light be and light was. Yeah. You released your faith. And at the same time, there was somebody that was building a house. And you said it was several years before I saw that house. Mm -hmm. But the floor plan was exactly what we needed to meet the needs of our family. It was perfect for us. She began to build it the very time we began to believe for it. Now that's... That's the As point. As I recall, that is accurate. That's the point I wanted to make because it said in Mark 11, what things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Yeah, so, so the Lord was working. The Lord was working at that very moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the very moment. And so point being, and you said it in your book, God started to work immediately. I mean, and I just can't get off this, Gloria. You said it. And God started doing it. That's right. You know, as I recall, George, wow. that you're talking about the Green River Courthouse. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. And and just the kids were little. Kelly was like either in kindergarten or the first grade. I mm -hmm. think she was in the first grade. Mm. And that within three minutes of that house was the best place for her to private school was the best I place for her to I remember that school. school, Gloria. I remember. That I didn't think about yes. praying for that. Yes, that's right. Well, Gloria. that was your Garden of Eden. Yeah. Yep, that's right. That was, everything was in place. That's the way God does things. <clears throat> you said God started, and the, the reason I keep bringing this up, because I want you to use your faith, and I want you to see how powerful faith is. That's when it's released from our mouth, words spoken, those words are, have creative power to that's them. Right. And you are literally, with your words, creating this new home with the words of your mouth. And so you said, God started to work immediately. After moving back to Fort Worth, Kenneth and Gloria looked at the house. These owners had tried to sell it, even give it away. <laughs> but it was given back. As, as you said in your book, they gave that house away and the people who had it gave it back. It was, they couldn't, couldn't even- They couldn't keep it. Yeah, they, you said they couldn't even give it away. That was our home. Praise God, that's right. That was our we home. We enjoyed every minute of it. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians 4. I'm glad you reminded me of that, George. I'd kind of forgotten it. This is so powerful, Gloria. So powerful. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Kelly was in, she started either kindergarten or the first grade in that little in school. That, yeah. Private school down there. And I remember when I came on the scene, she was older. She was like 12 or 13 at the time. And there was another school that she was going to. As a matter of fact, the first week I was here, we went to a play that she was in, and it was a school was right around. An out, out where uh, we moved then, what was that area? It was, no, same area, but oh, it, same was, area. it was right before you all moved out to the I lake. See. But there was a school right there, perfect school for her. She went to that little yeah. sort of kindergarten mm -hmm. school, then she went to a, another school that was so close by the house, it was right around the corner. Yeah. The Lord is so awesome. He's so good. And 2 Corinthians 4.13, again, the point of this today is that we are endeavoring to use our faith, believe God, speak words of faith, 
Yeah. And a fa faith will create a house. It created a house for you, mm -hmm. for you and Kenneth. That's right. And in verse 13 of 2 Corinthians 4, it says, we, have, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Yep. So you were speaking this house into being. That's right. We believed it. We said it. We got you said it. in your book, <laughs> we leased the house for one year and agreed to pay cash for it at the end of that year. We lived well. But as far as having that much money in cash, we just didn't I have it. I never had had it. In the natural, there was no reason to expect to have it. But in the spirit, yeah. we knew our God was able. We could have borrowed the money years sooner, but we refused to compromise in our decision. Whenever there is a choice between the world's way and the word's way, yes. we also go always go with yes. the word. Amen. Now then you said this, when we moved in, the house was in need of repair. It needed to be completely remodeled, so I was faced with a decision. I had enough money to start the remodeling. Uh, and then you said, this is not our house legally. It would be unwise to put thousands of dollars into a house that didn't belong to us. But then you said, as an act of faith, I went to work. When Satan would say, that sure is a lot of money for you to lose, I would answer, and this is what I'm saying here. You believed and you spoke. You yeah. spoke those words. You, you declared the, the word. You took the ground. You <laughs> occupied. Right. We occupied. That's right. <laughs> and you said, no, in the name of Jesus, this is my house and it will be paid for in July. We will pay cash for it. <clears throat> and I believe I have the money in the name of Jesus. That's right. And we so, did. And you did. And we'll get into that. We'll get into that That's a little bit so, more. It's amazing what God will do if you'll give him something to work with. Yes. Faith. If you and will work. give him. And you can't have, you can't yes. give him faith without giving him the right word, without giving the right words, because that is faith. What you say with your mouth That's is right. your faith speaking. So we're going to begin something here today, Gloria, and we'll continue it tomorrow. But <clears throat> during this time that you were doing the renovation of that house, you were fixing it up, um, you, the Lord gave you three revelations. And that's why this is so important. We'll start today. We'll continue tomorrow. He gave you three revelations about believing God for a house. This is in your book, God's Will is Prosperity. The first one. I need to read that book again. <laughs> it's excellent. <laughs> it's excellent. And the first one was, and we'll put these on the screen, the revelation of divine prosperity. The Lord gave you a revelation of divine prosperity. This is all where you're believing God for the that's money. Right. The second one was the revelation of peace and prosperity. And the third one was a revelation of dominion and authority. Praise God. Amen. We have just enough time here, just enough time. Let's talk about this first one, the revelation of divine prosperity. And that's on page two. Um, in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. This is what you said, Gloria. Our commitment years before to stay out of debt made the difference. Yeah. If we had not committed to God's Word, then we would not know what we know today about living right. in God's system That's of exactly finance. Right. One day, as I was standing in my house looking out the window and thinking about these things, God gave me what I would call a revelation of divine prosperity. Mm -hmm. Divine prosperity works exactly the same way as divine healing. We would allow symptoms of lack to come on us and stay there, and we were willing to tolerate yeah, them. It didn't know better. I realized that Jesus bore the curse of poverty at the same time he bore the curse of sickness. So you said, right. you can believe for divine prosperity just as you believe for divine health. Both blessings That's already right. belong to you. That's right. That's an awesome thing <clears throat> to learn. You should refuse lack just as quickly <clears throat> as you refuse sickness. And you said, if you make up your mind, make the quality decision that you're not willing to live in lack, but that you're willing to live in divine prosperity and abundance, mm -hmm. Satan cannot stop the flow of oh, God's man. financial blessing. Wow. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's so, Gloria, the Lord That's gave true. you a revelation of living in divine prosperity. Right. You saw it. I you experienced saw it. it right there. And in the same way that you saw from the Word of God that you've been redeemed from the curse of sickness and disease, this revelation of divine prosperity mm -hmm. came 
that you can, you're also redeemed from lack. That's right. The curse of poverty. The curse of poverty. And Hallelujah. That, that revelation, and I, I, I don't, you've got to get this. You've got to get this in the same way that Jesus bore your sickness and disease. He bore your lack. In the same way that he provided healing and health for our bodies, he provides whatever we need for our physical lives as a home. In our physical body, if there's an incurable thing, yeah. it's impossible. Yeah, that's right. But with faith, all things are possible. Right. And that's the same way it works in every area of your life, in your, uh, in your finances, in your things you're believing for. Yes. All things become possible. All things are possible. When you exercise your faith. Yes. In the, based on the Word of God. Put it in your eyes, your ears. Yeah. You say it with your mouth. You re believe you receive it. You take it with your faith. Yes. All things become possible. <clears throat> Glory to Glory, God. Glory, this, this revelation of divine prosperity was so big in you at the time. This is 1970. It's the late 70s. We weren't walking in it exactly. No. We were taking we were taking ground <laughs> at it was that time. Big, it yeah. was big. But we Gloria. increased all the time because yes. we continued to stand, take it. That's Glory right. God. That's uh oh, right. guess what? Uh, we're out of gotta time. Gotta go. This is so <laughs> good, God, George. I, I'm enjoying it. You're <laughs> preaching good to me. And I believe the people today are receiving it. You're receiving yeah. this today in Jesus' Amen. name. You know, we've learned that that a house from God, that's His will. That's right. For us to live in a beautiful, debt-free home. Peaceful. You know, you said something on the broadcast. The Bible talks about peaceful <clears throat> habitations. Peaceful habitations. And you said something on the broadcast yesterday about mansions in heaven and how God's will be done on earth. That's right. As it is in heaven. That's right. So, you know, there's not any repossessed property up there. No, there's not. Have you ever thought of that? I have not thought of Beautiful that. Beautiful mansions. <clears throat> They're all paid for, free and clear. The driveways probably go. Yes. The streets are yes. gold. So I wouldn't think you'd put yes. asphalt on your driveway. No, no foreclosure. Actually, are there any cars? We don't need cars, do we? We don't need cars, I don't think. We Maybe can, there's, there's no driveway. I read about chariots in <laughs> heaven, but, uh, but that is a picture. Uh, That's a place. picture of how we should live. That's right. Every good gift that comes to us every comes from gift, above, comes from the Father gift. of lights. That's right. So it comes from there. So right. it is the will of God for you to live in a beautiful, debt-free home, a home that ministers peace life and to love, you. Peace and love, walking after the Word. Yes, yes. Not only the physical structure, but what goes on inside that home as well. That's right. An atmosphere of the love of God. That's right. Praise we talked God. yesterday, Gloria, about this home that when you first got hold of the fact that to keep out of debt, you began believing for a house. Mm -hmm. That is what you, you just cut the chase. Well, Ken went, went to the air. He, he wanted, went to the air with the airplane. an airplane. You cut the chase. I mean, I you went right house. for the house. That's right. And the moment that you believe, started believing God for a house and confessing that, there was a lady in Fort Worth that was building your home. That's right. That had begun constructing the home that you would eventually live yeah. in. Well, you moved into that home and you were renting it at the time, mm -hmm. and, but with the, with the lease agreement, lease purchase agreement that That's you could right. buy it at the end of you the year. You reminded me of things I'd forgotten. Well, and you, That's right. you were choosing between using the money that you did have to renovate that house, fix it up, but it wasn't enough money at the time to, to buy it. it. So you just, you hung your faith on 2 Corinthians 9, 8. I put my anchor down. You put your anchor <laughs> down, started believing God, yeah. started confessing the word. You moved into that house. And during the time that you were renovating it, the Lord began dealing with you. And we started talking yesterday about these three revelations. And for those of you that are interested, this information is in chapter two of God's Will is Prosperity by Gloria Copeland. It's all in there. Well, you received <clears throat> three revelations, and uh, the first one was of divine. Read that book again. It's great. I read it the <laughs> other day. I read. I read it, Gloria. I don't read the new ones that they've yeah. made, the new reprints that they've done. Oh, I read the you original. Read the original, yeah, I like the that. one that says George and Terry from Love, Gloria. Yeah, okay. When it was first <laughs> released, but you had this revelation of divine prosperity. We talked about it yesterday. Let me go through it very quickly with you. The Lord showed glory that she was to stand in faith for her prosperity in the same way mm -hmm. that you stood in faith for your healing. That's right. 
Just as Jesus had borne her sicknesses and diseases, he paid for her poverty and lack. That's right. We need, you said this, I quote, we need to see prosperity in the same light that we see healing in health. You begin to walk in divine prosperity with the decision to no longer allow Satan to put symptoms of lack on you. That's right. So that was the first of three revelations that the Lord gave you standing in that house believing God for the finances. Let's Amen. look at the second one. Okay. And if you would, Gloria, let's just jump over there to Isaiah 53. Turn with me to Isaiah 53 first, and then we'll go back a little bit and look at Isaiah 48. This is called what, Gloria, Gloria the Lord gave you the revelation of peace and prosperity. Peace and prosperity. Peace and prosperity. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, it says this, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. Amen. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 48. And Gloria, I'm going to need your amplified. Okay. So if you would, please, Isaiah 48, Do you want verses... To it you go it? ahead. You, okay. you go ahead and read it. Verses 17 and 18 in the Amplified. Would you read that for Thus us? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. Oh, that you had hearkened to my commandments, then your peace and prosperity would have been like a flowing river, and your righteousness, the holiness and purity of the nation, like an abundant like the abundant waves of the sea. The Lord gave you that scripture. Amen. And that's the same and thing that Terry and I did. We stood on that scripture. revelation of divine prosperity for our house. Yeah. We stood on the revelation of peace and prosperity, as it says in the scripture. Prosperity. Then your peace and prosperity would have been like a flowing river and your righteousness like the abundant waves of Glory the sea. Glory to God. Glory so the Lord gave you that peace and prosperity and he showed you, he said, peace and prosperity go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Your prosperity has already been provided for you. Peace prosperity, prosperity is yours. Rest in that. There's a lot of people that have prosperity, but they don't have peace. They don't have peace. And without both of them together, there's right. something just bad, wrong, missing. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> peace and prosperity. Isn't that just like the Lord to leave nothing out? He, peace. Exact, peace. And... Uh, I believe there's a scripture that says in the Amplified maybe, everything that makes for man's highest good, peace. That's, or either that's a definition oh, yeah. from one of the yeah. concordances. Everything, yeah. peace is everything that makes for man's highest good. Oh, that's so Isn't good. Isn't that good? That's excellent. It's blessing. It's the blessing. For his highest good. Well, that yeah. goes right along with that, the Hebrew definition of peace. Nothing is missing. Nothing missing. Nothing is lacking. Broken. It's all there. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing Hallelujah. missing, nothing broken. Yeah. Glory Were to God. Were you just singing? You sounded like Oh, this. I just sort of chirped. <laughs> I wouldn't call you it heard singing. heard a chirp. <laughs> it slipped out. It slipped out. Well, it was very good Don't chirp. Don't tell Kenneth. Okay. okay. He, all right. <laughs> Don't tell him I sang on the broadcast. <laughs> okay. He might take my job away. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> well, you had a revelation of divine prosperity, a revelation of peace, and prosperity. You said this, peace and well-being are in, included in a prosperous life. Peace and well-being include a prosperous right. life. God told Abram, and this is Genesis 15, 1, fear not, Abram, I am your shield, your abundant compensation, and your reward shall be exceedingly great. Amen. You know, when Ken started teaching prosperity there, that was a kind of a new subject mm -hmm. on the block in those days. I mean, you, True. you didn't hear anything about prosperity. True. You heard about healing. You might have heard some things about peace, yeah. but prosperity. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's an awesome thing. It is, it an is awesome so thing. natural in the spiritual realm. Yes. The flow of abundance. God, the flow of abundance. God doesn't make things cheap. Or, That's right. Or uh, lacking. There's but nothing he's missing. Provided prosperity. The blessing in the Old Testament yeah. was just awesome. Yeah. And he doesn't leave anything and out. And certainly the New Testament would be no less. True. Glory. That's to God. true. Well, you preached me happy. Joy. He doesn't. He doesn't leave anything out. He no. provides for everything. He will provide you with a house. That's the revelation That's right. of divine prosperity. The revelation of peace 
and prosperity that go hand in hand with each other. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And you said this, this is very and one good. Of the, one scripture in the Old Covenant, and I don't remember where it is right now, but it talked about they'd live in houses they didn't build. Mm -hmm. We're, we are going to, next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you and I are going to go through 21 house scriptures. Oh, good. That'll be fun. I found 21 house scriptures plus two bonus scriptures because I just... That's great, George. Two bonus scriptures, that. and that's one of them from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Good. Houses you didn't build. I and mean... What was the second the, part of that? The... Um, I don't remember what the rest oh, of it Well, just look. Give I'll, us a little. I'll just, I'll give, give you a little, a little preview. Foretaste. I'll give you a little pr preview okay. of that. Um, let me see here. Let me see. I'm looking. Houses, this is a Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 11, that it shall be when the Lord thy God, verses 10 and 11, when the Lord thy God shall bring you into the land which he swore to thy fathers, to Abraham, Jacob, to give you great and goodly cities which you did not build, and houses. Cities. Cities. And houses. And houses full of all good things. Oh, yes, that was my furniture scripture. Hallelujah. Which you did not fill. So now that one comes next Thursday, not this, but next oh, Thursday. Can we wait? Wow. This God is will so furnish good. your house. Yeah, that's right. But this is what. That's it, so good. This is what the Lord showed you, Gloria. And you know, Terry and I were just hanging on to every word, especially that God's will is prosperity. Mm -hmm. Hanging on to every word. You said this, this scripture from Genesis 15:1. Amplified, fear not, Abram, I am your shield, your, your abundant, abundant compensation, compensation, and your reward shall be exceeding great. Amen. You said abundant compensation is far reaching. Abundant compensation means everything. Amen. And you said it enveloped Abraham in a More blanket than enough. of well being. Praise God. I like that. So he was thoroughly and completely, his needs were completely right. met. So, three revelations, Gloria. The first one was on divine prosperity for, mm -hmm. our, for your house. Mm -hmm. You are believing God for the finances to pay that house. Mm -hmm. So the Lord gave you the, the revelation of divine prosperity, the revelation of peace and prosperity, and finally, the revelation of dominion and authority. Amen. Oh, Genesis Glory chapter 1. Let's take a look. Dominion Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> in this revelation of dominion and authority... Again, this is what you said in your book, Gloria. Uh, and let's read this first. Genesis chapter 1 and 26 through 28. I'll read it to you. God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over. Now that dominion, I like the Amplified where it says dominion over or the Amplified says uh, uh, complete authority. That's Genesis yeah, 1, complete authority. Complete mm -hmm. authority. That's it. <clears throat> over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. You know, as I just said that, I thought about this. I thought he created us in, our, in his image. Would he want us to live in anything less? No. Of course. Than the beauty that he lives in. That's good. That's a good point. It's the will of we God. We were for created us. to live in the blessing. We were created to live mm -hmm. in the blessing. Be fruit that said, be fruitful and multiply. <clears throat> right. And God blessed them mm. and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it. The Lord gave you, Gloria, this revelation of dominion and authority. And the, the 28th verse of Genesis 1 in the Amplified, it says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it using all its vast resources. Glory to God in the service of God and man. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, here's, what, here's what the Lord gave you about the vast resources. You said... I'm going to go back and read that book. <clears throat> you should. <laughs> <laughs> you said, while we were standing in faith for the money to pay for our house, the Lord reminded me of this scripture and revealed to me that every material thing here came mm -hmm. from the earth's vast That's resources. Right. Praise God. Every piece of lumber, yeah. brick, glass, concrete, 
mortar. There is nothing in the makeup of our house that had not come from the earth's That's right. resources. Hallelujah. There's a scripture, I guess it's a proverb, it says every chamber of your house will be filled with all pleasant and precious riches. And that comes next Thursday. Oh, I got some don't scriptures miss that. for you. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Praise and that's God. right though. You're right. Absolutely right. Praise God. And this is using all of its vast resources. Every piece of lumber, every brick, every piece of glass, right. concrete, mortar. He created. There's nothing in the makeup of our house that had not come from the earth's resources. Praise God. I'm going to go all read there. that book. That's good. You said, I wasn't taking authority over something that belonged to someone else. That mm -hmm. house was up for sale. That's right. The people have, had relinquished their authority when they put it on the market. I had the right to take authority over it and receive it as mine in the name of Jesus. Now this is, I'll finish my part with what you said here. I began to see that I already had authority over that house and authority over the money I needed to purchase it. I said, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the money I need. I command you to come to me. I take my place and I take dominion over yep. that which I yep. need. I command it to come in Jesus' name. Ministering spirits, you go and you cause it to come. Amen. Now think about it. In the garden, God made them the garden. Yes. Everything good was in it. Nothing yes. was lacking. And he gave them dominion. He gave them dominion. But when they failed to take dominion, right. who came in? Yeah, Satan came in. Satan came in mm -hmm. and he robbed them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a thief. That's he's what he thief. is. He's a thief. And so we're in the same position. If we don't take yep. dominion in our situations, yep. then he comes in and robs us yes. or makes us sick or whatever else of the curse he's trying to promote. That's right. My Jesus. You know, on this revelation of dominion and authority, Terry and I did that. We, first of all, took authority. When we, when we, we purchased the house that we're in now, we purchased it from Scott and Missy, your sister. And as we were, we paid it, we paid it off in one year. Price it took one God. year to pay off that house. And we were, we were calling in we were in. taking dominion mm -hmm. over the finances for the house. Then we, Terry determined that it needed to be renovated and she wanted to do some things and enlarge some places for it. And I jumped right in there with her with my faith in that. We you believe God together. <laughs> and we did, we kind of rebuilt it. But, but yeah. we also realized when I read this in your book, I took, I took authority over every piece of lumber, every piece of glass, Wonder. everything in that house. glory. We took, we took dominion over doorknobs. Amen. We took dominion over doorknobs. And Terry didn't want just, just any doorknob. That's right. There's one room in the house. It's called the Texas room. Mm -hmm. It's a theme room. And it's just beautifully done. The bathroom that's in there and the shower and Western it's all style. Western style. And yeah. we've got... We've got pictures. We even have a picture of Wichita Slim. It's a pencil oh. picture that somebody did. Max had it growing up. Then Kelly, we were at the, her house one day and they were moving out, moving to another place. She said, what am I going to do with this? Max is gone. I said, I'll take it. So you put it so in the Texas room. So we put it in the room. Texas room. Yeah. But there is a doorknob. If you were to come into the Texas room, it's not just any doorknob. I'm sure. It is the doorknob that what belongs in that room. Is it the star of Texas? <clears throat> it has a star, yes, on it. And, but we took authority over that, Gloria. And, and you, you made it. And we made it. But every piece of lumber, everything in that house, if you're renovating, if you're needing to build, if you're needing to build a house, you stand on this revelation that Gloria had about taking dominion and authority over what you need. Tell you what, let's do that right now. All right, do it. Let's take dominion and authority over the houses that you need. Father, in Jesus' name, Thank you, Lord. we stand on we these stand revelations. On we the stand revelation on the Word of God. Word. We take hold of our homes yes. in the name of yes, Jesus, yes, yes. debt-free, plenty of room, beautiful living spaces, yes, homes that are great and that they're a blessing to us. We take dominion over that now. In command Jesus' name. And we command name. it to yes, come. Yes, yes, command it. Jesus we command name. you. We receive it Come now. to us. Come to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. Gloria, that's, we just have seconds left. 
30 of them. Okay. But <clears throat> what I just did, what I just did and what I just spoke and what I just said, I learned every bit of it from you and Kenna. Right, Scott. Has Watching. it worked for you? It has How worked. has it worked out for you, George? Yeah. How has that worked hey. out? Gloria, Terry and I live in a beautiful, right, debt-free home. Do it you, is, it is lovely. We've got 15 seconds left. But do you yeah. think when you get to heaven, you're going to get some run-down, second-hand, mm -mm. ugly place? No. No, there are mansions there. We haven't seen a house yet. It's not like you said, it's houses. not a shanty town in heaven. It's not. God no. always gives us the best. God. And the Bible says this. He talks about days of heaven on the earth. That's right. That's and right. that's where you and I can live, and that's where you can live too if you'll take the minion. 125th day, <laughs> day of prosperity, day prosperity. Pastor <laughs> has been preaching to us and teaching us. And you know what? I'd love to have some of your testimonies. That would be so good hey, to can hear. Can I read one? Can I read yeah, testimony? yeah, yeah. And those of you who haven't read them, send them to us. We get excited about that. Here's one. Pastor George and Gloria, my wife and I have been greatly blessed by your broadcast on debt freedom. We have a completely different perspective as we listen now Praise because God. we are living in the afterlife, life after debt. Oh, last I like summer, that. Last summer afterlife. we were blessed to walk into the bank and pay off our mortgage in full. Praise God. We went out of the bank parking lot shouting together right in the middle of town, we're debt free, we're debt yes, free. Hallelujah. A milestone marker that we will never forget. We paid off a 30 year mortgage in 14 years. We will never go back. Now we only years. owe love wherever we go. Praise and God. so often we can show that love because there's money in our accounts instead of in the bankers. Thank you. Everyone at KCM, EMIC, we have seen the reality of life after debt. I like so, that. There was something in there I wanted to write down. Go ahead. What so, was it? It was just so powerful. Um, we have a completely different perspective mm -hmm. as we listen now mm -hmm. because we're living in the afterlife. In the afterlife. I like that. <laughs> Glory to God. The afterlife. Life How after cool death. That? That's great. Is that in my that's, uh, No, actually that's in that's just in the testimony I have there. I'll let you that have that. That is so awesome. We Isn't are living wonderful? in the afterlife. We are. Gloria and I have been talking on the broadcast this week and we'll be talking next about how to believe God for a house. How you can believe God yeah. for your house. And over the last couple of days, we've been giving Gloria's testimony about how she and Kenneth, uh, first, when they started in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they took the word of God, stood on it, found that scripture in Romans 13, yeah. 8 that said, Oh, no man, anything, keep out of debt. So Gloria began to believe God for a house. And at the same time, she well, believed. I, I would guess our house was maybe 700 square feet or 800 <laughs> at the time. A little house. Tiny little thing. Little house. A little project. Little house, house you know. on the prairie it was. Yeah. But you you just pressed in there. You jumped in there and said, we're going to believe I God for a for house. It. At the same time you were believing for a house, there was someone in Fort Worth building a house. Mm -hmm. You guys came back to Fort Worth. They were trying to sell the house. They couldn't sell it. They tried to give it away and somebody gave it back to them. It was your house. I couldn't give her. It was your house. Away. So you had a lease agreement yeah. with them. Yeah. We I think we leased it for about a year. A year. And at the end of the year, you could purchase the house. And you had to really hear from the Lord because you wanted to fix up the house. You mm -hmm. had the money to do that, but you didn't have the money to buy it. And she didn't want to wait. And I she didn't, didn't want to wait. She want, no, neither of you wanted to wait. So you just, the Lord showed you the three revelations of divine prosperity, of peace and prosperity and dominion yeah. and prosperity over. And you began to exercise, speak right. to it, use your faith, believe God, call in the money. And then we are, we're saying here on the broadcast, it was six years from the time that you started believing God for the perfect home that was back in Tulsa. Yeah. And you had a little bit of a journey, six year journey, until you moved into the house that you were living in. At the end of the year's lease, you paid cash. I think that was the Green River Courthouse. That was the Green River Courthouse. Yeah. At the end of that lease, Gloria and Kenneth paid cash for their, for their faith house. And we had gone ahead and put money into it, redoing it. Redoing the house. I, I don't know that I recommend that, but that's what we had to well, re, re We were, I, you know, we felt that was Yeah, the, you the were. Thing to and do. that's the important thing here, folks, on any of this that yes. we're talking about. Be you move, follow the Spirit of God. You take, you take this that we're talking about 
and you go before the Lord and you inquire of yes, the Lord. Yes, amen. Every situation is different. We're taking our experiences and we're sharing them with you and, and the, the, the walk that, that Gloria and Kenneth had that we had. But you, the, you have to take these same things and say, Lord, what would you have us to do? I didn't want to stay in that house the way it was, mm -hmm. but it, we spent some money on it, painting and, you know, doing. And uh, we were taking the territory, though. You really were. I remember, Gloria, because when I first came, you were in that house. This is 1976. And I remember Terry taking me over there. I thought it was a beautiful home. You had one room, like a, a sitting area, living area, two living areas. Mm -hmm. And one room had a piano. Yes. And it had a parquet floor. Yes. And I, I just, you just have to know where I came from. <laughs> I, was, I was coming up in the world. And I was so impressed with that parquet floor. I figured you picked nice. it out. But, I don't remember if I put it in or if it was And there. then in the living room, so you walk in and to the right there was that room with the piano and the parquet floor. Yeah. But then you keep going through the hallway into the next living area and you had white carpet. Ooh. I thought, what? You remember it better than I do. You had George. white carpet, and then you had all of the shelves. The bookshelves were painted in white. And I was just, I was, I believe the Lord was working on me right there and right well, then. Well, about, we get inspired by things. About yeah. believing God for a house. But you, at the end of that <laughs> year's lease, and those revelations that God gave you, you had the money. Yeah to pay for that house. Amen, that's right. You said in your book, God's will is prosperity. I'm not sure how, except by faith in God's word. Had we borrowed the money, we would still have 35 years to pay. <laughs> when I wrote that book. Yeah, and when you wrote years. the book. When you, uh, and you wrote the book, I think the wow. book was written, Gloria, in 1978, somewhere in there, 79, yeah. something like that. That's something, isn't it? So you would have had 35 years to pay on that house. And would house. have paid for it three or four times. Three or four times over. But you said in your book, thank God borrowed money is not our source. He is. That's right. Now, you know, in our notes here, I have this written down. What I just said, this must become a revelation to you. Gloria said, yeah. you cannot receive these things just because I tell you about them. That's they right. must become real to you. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to read a point here. This is on, on B3. And this is so important, Gloria. You have to take the scriptures on prosperity and meditate right. on them That's until the they key. become a reality in your heart, until you know that prosperity Amen. belongs to you. That's right. That's exactly right. You have to know that. You have to know it. And you said... That's how faith is built. Right. And that's you can't how, do these things without faith. You have to meditate on those scriptures. It doesn't scriptures. happen just because you know something. It happens because you fed on the Word yes, of God yes. until faith is in your heart so solid, it's mm. an anchor. Unless it's in there so solid. Yeah. It is an anchor. It and is you an said, anchor. once you have a revelation of divine prosperity, peace and prosperity, dominion and authority mm -hmm. in your spirit... You won't allow Satan to take it from you. And then you said the Word of God is the source of your prosperity. Amen. That is the truth. Hallelujah. It really is. So the Lord, in, in that particular example of your house, you had the money by the end of the year. You stood, you believed God, you hung your faith, you yeah. clinged to the Scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 8 and God will make every grace yeah. and earthly, every grace and favor, make that available That's to you. Right. And come I wanted to... Come to you in abundance. Every, come to you in abundance. Every, uh, every what? favor every and earthly blessing, blessing come to you come to in you abundance. abundance. So that what you have no need is. for aid or support. You're but that you be in furnished abundance. in abundance. For every good work. For every good work, work we got it. God. Yay! <laughs> oh, the word is powerful, it's isn't it? It's powerful. Oh. It's powerful. I, and I must say and this, it brings Gloria. brings itself to pass. We, we, you and I, in, in the last couple of years, we've preached a little bit on how to believe God for a house. I think we did two, two broadcasts on it a long time ago. And I just Googled yesterday. I went online and I Googled how to believe God for a house. Yeah. And there is a pastor out there and he has these little excerpts 
of the notes that you and I preach. Really? How fun is that? <laughs> it really is fun. Right. And he was preaching it, and he says, you've got to stand on 2 Corinthians 9, 8. That's right. And he was talking about what we talked about Doesn't yesterday. That bless you that the focus got of it? James, a double-minded man is unstable, yeah. but single-minded, you're stable. So he got a hold of it, yes. and glory, Praise he's God. preaching it to his congregation. I was Praise so tickled God. when I saw that. That blesses me. Um, but this is, and it's a stand that we take. We need to read our scripture because okay. we can't go without reading our scripture. Exodus, Exodus, Ephesians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, it says in verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, uh, withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Yeah. Stand therefore. Now, the, it goes on talking about the, the various parts of the armor. Now, what does your Amplified Bible say? It saying? says, I like this, <clears throat> stand therefore, hold your ground. Hold your ground. I mean, devil's always trying to talk you out of That's stuff. right. Walking by faith. Hold your ground. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth mm. around your loins. In that's other right. words, get ready for a fight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you can win it. Uh, that's right. Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and yeah. having put on the breastplate mm. of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with yes. God. So yes. it's not going to yes. work for every Tom, Dick, and Harry that's doing whatever they want to do. Yes, ma'am, that's and right. And not obeying the Word of God. Then they go decide, well, I'm going to believe for a house. Now, you got to have the, you've got to have it in your heart. Yep. you got to have the Word in your heart. Yeah. How do you do it? In your eyes, your ears, it gets in your heart. That's you right. say it with your mouth. That's right. And these things don't happen overnight. I mean, I've been believing for a house for a while. And you took your stand. Yeah. You took your stand yeah. of faith. So did Terry and I. Yeah. We took our you stand took, of faith. You had to make the stand. It was like <laughs> Custer's last stand sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you yeah. had to you stand. You have to take it. Yeah. You have to take it. And there were times when we were renovating our house that there would be these, these beams that were up. You can actually see through from one end to the other. And it would be like that for weeks at a time because we were paying cash as we went. But now how long would it, how long would you, uh, well, how long would you have paid okay. for it over time, took, not to mention how much interest you would have it sold? Took, it took five years to renovate. But how long? But we are take, debt free. You pay one off in what, 40 years? You pay one off, <laughs> yeah. We'd still, glory. we'd still. So it was record time when you get We'd still right be so in it. the thick of paying that thing off yeah. right now. It would be. And you would have spent more than an, more money than what you paid for it. So Terry and I, and Terry, of course, just knowing a lot of this before I did, and then me coming on the scene, and I was hungry for it. When I discovered, You've been a good student. When I discovered some things, when I heard you and Kenneth preaching about this kind of life, I took hold of it. Yeah, you did. With everything I had. And so Terry and I were the same way. We took our stand of faith. Amen. We believed That's what God. You have to do. And we, we took our authority, and these revelations became real to us. And we studied the scriptures. As a matter of fact, this statement that you made here. You have to take the scriptures on prosperity and meditate on them until they become a reality in your heart and until you know that prosperity belongs to you. This was B3 here. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're going to do next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Gloria, I have 21 scriptures that we are going to study out. Oh, good. That'll be fun. 21 scriptures and two bonus scriptures. <laughs> two bonus scriptures. That I just got a couple of days ago. And, and I thought about what you said. You've got to take those scriptures and meditate on them. Yeah. And those scriptures next week. As I recall, I went over scriptures every day. You did. And one of the things that we're going to make available to the people on the broadcast, in the notes, it's in the notes, I have a sheet that has your handwritten <laughs> scriptures. Oh, no. Write it's a page as well as with handwritten <laughs> scriptures on it. We're also making available a, a, um, a brochure Good. of house scriptures that you came out with. So I took right. those, I took from the brochure, I took from your handwritten, I took from what we studied out, I took from some what the Lord showed me recently. God is good. And what you have to do is completely and totally immerse, submerge, meditate on, mm -hmm. get those scriptures down on the inside of you. See yourself with that That's house right. and see what God has to say about you having a house. Oh, Amen. So you said you got to take the scriptures and meditate on them until they become real. That's right. You know, we had to get to a place in the renovation of the house that the living in that house became more real 
than what it looked like. Gloria, I can remember the days when I would go up to my study on that second floor and all we had was, ba we had the, the, uh, the plywood on the floor, yeah. plywood on the walls. <laughs> there weren't even the windows in yet. And I would take a chair and I would sit you were it. occupying. I was occupying the land. I was taking my stand. I took a chair and I sat it exactly where my chair sits now. And I sat there and I took my Bible and I would sit and I would write notes as if I were right there and I'd look around that room and I would see the beautiful paneling. I would see the lights. Terry has a, it's a man chandelier yeah. <laughs> that hangs in the middle of it. And I saw it with the windows and I just, it had to become so real to me on the inside right. that it was more real to me than what was not there. And Aren't that's how we glad? had to be. Was it worth the effort? Glory, it was so worth the effort. Yes, amen. Our faith is stronger today because of it. And with the few moments we have left, I'm going to read to you an excerpt from a partner letter that Kenneth wrote a long time ago. And he said, just how far will you go with the word? When God told Israel that he would make them plenteous in goods and they would lend unto many nations and borrow from none, he meant he would supply them yes, better that's right. than if they went Absolutely. to another nation. When Gloria and I decided to owe no man anything, we made that decision to glorify God and to please God by walking by faith. We started making the quality decision to borrow no more and released our faith to pay mm -hmm. all of the debts we owed. Right. We were faced with believing for our everyday supply. We learned to believe for the small things first. As God taught us to prosper, the day came when we knew we were ready to have a home. We were faced with the same question I told you to ask yourself. How far will we go on the word? Yeah. We made the decision then, if we ever had a choice, we would use our faith instead of going to some other source. Mm -hmm. We were in good enough financial position to have borrowed the money and lived in a better house than the one we were living in all those eight years. Believe me, the faith way was better. That's we right. have the perfect home. It's not just a nice home. The Word is strong enough in any yes, situation. Yes, amen, amen. And That's so, good. Gloria, like it's that. not just you and Kenneth. It's not just Terry and me. There is a family in our church right now. Yes. A family, he works here in the prayer department. He goes to our church. They are tithers. They are givers. They've been believing God for the perfect house. And Gloria, someone gave them a Praise. debt free God, home. That they gave marvelous. him a debt free home. And I am so excited about this testimony. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about awesome. what God, the, and they've been standing, they've been believing, they've been using their faith in this, and they've been listening to us preach. Praise God. Think about the family that gave them a debt free home. What's going to happen to them? Wow. Well, I'll, I'll give you a little hint on the, the testimony um, the, the parents. See, they had talked about borrowing well, the money so from the parents the and parents. the parents said, we, we, we want to provide an inheritance for our children's yeah. children. Praise God. That's good. So everybody take, ought to be able to do that. Take, take a look at this right now. This is absolutely going to bless you. As a young couple, Kurt and Barbara Bruner left their home in Switzerland to move to Austin, Texas, where they spent nine years establishing and serving in a mission for homeless youth and runaways. During that time, they were given some books and teaching materials from a ministry that they did not recognize. Pretty much we just put everything on the shelf <laughs> because we'd never heard of them. And then um, I was looking for a daily devotional and so I remembered that I got this face-to-face -face book. And so I started reading it and I was just, wow, that's something I never heard of. So we started um, listening to the podcast and then we started writing down the promises of God and putting them all over the house and proclaiming them. We just knew we have to come to Fort Worth, come close to KCM, Kenneth Coburn Ministries, to be, become a part of it. And so we came in March this, of this year 2013 and uh, friends of ours they they gave us the tra a travel trailer just that we have a roof over our head mm -hmm. we were in the trailer probably a week mm -hmm. and through just 
spending time with God, I just this Bible verse jumped on up that God wants to give us a house. We felt like Abraham, leaving everything behind and just going to the promised land. And so in Deuteronomy, it says, if you come into the promised land, I will give you houses and I give you land. And so he started looking for houses and found that particular one and we went there. And it was like just bigger and nicer than anything we have expected or were thinking of. We're thinking about, okay, how do we pay for this? <laughs> and so we, we just had this hesitation about going to a bank because we just heard and through KCM and you know, debt free and freedom and we, and we never were in debt so far and never will be. And so we just prayed about it, pondered about it, and, and then one morning you came with a Bible verse. Second Corinthians 12, 14, that the parents should take care of their kids and not the kids of their parents. I've never really, really saw that verse before, so I just thought, okay, Lord, is that the way you want to provide that house? And uh, it was just kind of, okay, let's call my parents and see if they can help us. They went into prayer and they were so excited. The Lord spoke to them, that's it, that's their house. It's a part of the inheritance so that they actually were gonna give us this house as a part of that. And so that's how we received that house. Kurt and Barbara paid cash and moved into their new home just three weeks later. They have dedicated this house to the Lord as a place of ministry and fellowship. The family is connecting to their new church home and Kurt was offered a full-time position. He has completed his training and is now serving our partners and friends as a prayer minister at KCM. What's on our heart is to actually to show the people how big our God is, how glorious He is. Gloria and Kenneth Copeland and George Pearsons, and they are teaching how to receive things by faith. That's where we heard it for the first time and we applied it because we knew it was working in their lives. And so we thought, okay, it's gonna work in our lives too. And it did. There's no place like home. Home sweet home. Home is where the heart is. Imagine the home of your dreams, a place of your own, debt free. Everyone has that perfect home in mind. And the good news is, your home is part of God's promise of provision to you and your family. The Bible has very specific scriptures about having a good house with beautiful furnishings. You can stand on those scriptures in faith to get the perfect house for you. How to Believe God for a House, a BDOV teaching series on DVD or CD, includes 10 inspiring messages with Gloria Copeland and George Pearsons, and a bonus session with George and Terry Pearsons on their personal journey to receiving their home. You'll also receive study notes for all 11 sessions. It's a great way for you and your family to discover God's will about your finances and your dwelling place. Start right where you are and learn how to believe God for your dream house today. Discover God's will about your dwelling place. Order your copy of How to Believe God for a House Package at a discounted price of only $24.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special, call our toll-free number 1-800-600-7395 or write to us today. Develop in you a strong faith image of God's plan for your house. Believe God's word and stand your ground in faith. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. You know, this great salvation in every area of our lives, not just the new birth of our spirit, but the blessing and all that. If you study the scripture, you'll find out that the blessing was for the people who followed God and for the people that did what he said. And when they wouldn't follow God, then the curse was present and ready to ruin That's right. their lives. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that it's you can just do whatever you want to and these things will work. No, you, you first of all, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you make him the Lord of your life and you say, Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life or take my life and do something with it. I commit to you. I'm, I'm giving myself to you. 
Now that puts you in a position to receive the new birth, which is uh, being changed on the inside, mm -hmm. becoming what the Bible calls a new creature mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. And then it puts you in a position to receive the blessing yes. that's in Christ Jesus. So if you've never prayed that prayer of salvation, that's the first step for you. Jesus is Lord and He's the one that paid the price for the curse of the law, the te uh, yeah. scriptures teach us, so that we can walk in the blessing. So to get in the blessing, you come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to make a change and you want to give yourself to Him, just say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something with it. Thank you, or whatever words you want to commit to Him and, and make Him Lord of your life, give yourself to Him. Right. Now, when you do that, something happens to, if you do it in faith and you're believing, something happens to you on the inside. You are what the Bible calls born over again. What does that mean? That means that you're not that same old sinner you were. You might, have, you might be a serial killer. You could be anything. But when you make Jesus the Lord, I've talked to and visited with some people that were serial killers. But now, when I got to them, they were already born again. That's right. That's they were right. sweet people. <clears throat> yep. Oh, I'm telling you, I could tell you some things. And I, that's what it takes is to be born over again. It doesn't matter what's behind you. It's what's ahead of you that counts. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, just say, Jesus, I take you as my Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something with it. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you did that today, we want to send you some material, a free salvation package to let you know what happened to you so you can begin to take hold of the things that already been provided. The book is He Did It All For You. And we give you two brochures on how to study the Bible and how to grow, go, go, go. Don't stay just where you are. Increase. Stay in touch with this, uh, this broadcast because we teach you how to grow up. Get in a good church that teaches you the Word of God. Get in the Bible yourself. It's important for you to read the Bible. So if you want to Request your salvation package today. Go to kcm.org and we'll send it to you. We'll be glad to. If you have a testimony, a praise report, write it. The thing that I can do that is exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think is to make all grace abound towards you. Grace, just unmerited favor. My oldest, Joshua Caleb, he's 18 now. He just started college. He's gotten finances come in. I mean, you know what I mean? Just like different things. My one daughter loves horses and stuff. She's got been able to uh, go and do barrel racing, that type of stuff. I got my ice, my one daughter, she does ice skating. And it's like, she, she always wanted to go and do the, do the whole ice skating gig. Man, we are from Florida. Now you tell me about it. I believe God put ice skating rinks in Florida just so my baby could go in there and ice skate. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Your spiritual standing profoundly affects your financial standing. That's why when you get hold of the gospel and begin to prosper spiritually, you can begin to prosper physically and materially as well. You don't have to choose between financial and spiritual prosperity. Both belong to you. Reach out and receive the riches that belong to you. God is light and there is no darkness in Him. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Word Explosion, October 10th through 12th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. The 2013 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. 
The 2014 Southwest Believers Convention, June 30th through July 5th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. You know, one of the things that we say in our church is a response to this Bruner testimony that, that it's just God put this home into their hands. They've been listening to us teach. They've been listening to Praise this ministry God. and they've been exercising their faith. And God, God gave them a debt free house. That's a, that's way up there. Now. That's way up there. Glory it really is way up there. But that just shows you that all things are possible yes. to him that believes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. And you know, these, these people go to our church and one of the things that I've trained our congregation in is that when they hear a good testimony like that, and so many people, they'll hear, they hear a testimony like that and they'll go, man, I wish that could happen to me. Mm -hmm. But I've taught our congregation well. I tell them to say, that happens to me all the time. I know, I like that. That happens, that, that happens. happens. You need to, to say me. that. You need to say all that happens time. to me all the time. What Glory happened to the God. Bruner family, God is no respecter of persons. It'll happen to you, and we can just believe God together. Amen. Father, we agree together right now for Thank homes. Thank you, Lord. Homes, beautiful homes. Manifest For our your partners and friends and those that are watching and believing. And Lord, we honor you mm. for that in Jesus' Thank name. Thank you, Lord. We take you know, it. Gloria, being, being um, offering day today, uh, one of the things that we need to know about this family is that they are givers. Yeah. They are tithers. They're sowers. And they're operating on the same principle. Same thing when you and Kenneth were believing for your house, Terry and I believing for our yeah. house. We, we sowed our way through that. Yes, that's right. We gave our way through that. And you need to do the same thing. You need to continue to sow your way through. Don't stop giving. And I, I heard Kenneth talk about this one time about how you need to know when money comes in, what's it for? What's its purpose? Is that money, and I'm sure you had that challenge with your house. You had a deadline, and I'm sure you were putting some money back, but I'm sure that there was some money that came in that you saw that money and you knew that it was to sow and to, to give mm -hmm. into somebody else or into another ministry. Well, that's the same thing we have to do. You never, don't ever quit tithing. No. Never, ever, never. ever quit tithing. No. Don't ever quit giving. Don't ever quit sowing because listen to the benefit that this has. It says in verse 6 of 2 Corinthians 9, He which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which sows bountifully shall reap also what? Bountifully. Bountiful. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful oh, giver. Man. Well, we have to determine that. You have to determine that. Now you think about it. It's not reaping and sowing. It it's is. sowing <laughs> and reaping. Amen. Leave it to Gloria to just cut to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never thought that before. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's not, it's not reaping, reaping and, and sowing. sowing. Like some people think, well, when I get some money, I'll be a giver. But it's sowing and reaping. Oh my. Glory to God. Oh my. And that's so true. Yeah. So you heard it here first. <laughs> Not reaping and sowing. You don't reap a house first. You got to sow. That's you got to do some sowing. Well, maybe you could. I'm not you saying could. it's impossible. No. If you come from a wealthy family, yep. perhaps it's just yep. too bad that most of us didn't start out <laughs> that way. <laughs> God is able to make all yes, grace amen. abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may, may abound, abound to every good work. Amen. Let's pray for these folks yes, do it, before George, we go do for it. the weekend. Father, in Jesus' thank you, name, Lord. we pray over everyone. Oh, we thank, thank you, Lord, that you're supplying every need that you have, that they blessing. have, and that the blessing of God yes. is upon them in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Now listen, if you Lord. missed any of the broadcast this week, watch or download kcm.org. Uh, go to church this weekend. Go to some place that's preaching the Word of God. Glory and I are coming back on Monday. Remember this, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for joining us today on The Believer's Voice of Victory. To purchase this week's broadcasts on DVD or MP3 on CD, go to our website or call us today. Remember this week's product offer. These ministry tools are designed to help you live a happy and successful life in Christ. Get the Word working in your life and experience all God has for you. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, 
be sure to request your free salvation package. This will help you understand who you are in Christ and how to start living in victory.